Hello and welcome to the video. This is my video where I'm going to show you how I have put iNav on this model here. Now this is the Recon 7 Pro from Recon FPV. I did a video a little while ago. I'll put a link down below if you want to go and have a look at it. Comes supplied with beta flight but unusually they have happily added things like a compass and they've also got the barometer and things on here so we can have full iNav capability. Now, there is a dump file that I was sent from Recon FPV to load onto this, but it's not as easy as just flashing iNav on here, uploading the dump file, going to the field and having a wonderful time. iNav is a little bit more finicky about things like accel accelerometer calibration, if I can even say it, and also things like calibration of your compass. And the dump file has come from another model where the accelerometer might read fractionally different and it'll be another point on the planet, probably somewhere in China. So the compass calibration will be way out. So in this video, I'm going to go through all of the steps that I've done to get this flying beautifully here and give you a little bit of a demo. Now I have this video, I'm tempted to do a full iNav 3.0 quad setup from start because now I've gone through this and used the supplied dump file from Recon FPV, I think that might even be a better idea. So let me go through all of the process and show you how I took this thing from a beta flight ship to a fully autonomous, if I really want it to be, my nav ship. So the first thing you need to do is to back up your beta flight settings would be my advice. That way if you try iNav and you don't like it then you can always go back. iNav isn't as sophisticated in terms of the PID tuning and some other things uh, as beta flight does. It's, they're getting closer but I think if you're a hard beta flight flyer uh, you'll find some of the iNav stuff uh, a little bit like going backwards a few versions of beta flight. So I am backing everything up here. I'm doing two things. I'm saving a dump file uh, with all of my settings. It's more or less the dump file uh, that was in the original video. I have tweaked things like the on-screen display layout, things like how, how my modes are set up, all that kind of stuff. And I'm also doing a diff all and putting those files somewhere safe so that I can go back to beta flight in a later stage if that's something I fancy doing. Next thing to do then is to download and install iNav. You can download the configurator from iNav Wiki just like you do with Betaflight. I'll put a link down below. And then what we're going to do is just connect to the flight controller and have a very quick look at what the target is. So this is the HGLRC uh, F722. So now we know that we're going to go in the firmware flasher. Flashing it's exactly the same as doing something in Betaflight. We're just going to make sure we're choosing the latest, greatest version of iNav as I'm doing this. And then we're going to flash the whole thing. That's going to take about a minute, so that's a chance to make yourself a fresh cup of tea. So the first time it boots, it's going to start you through the iNav setup stuff. And I'm just going to say at the moment that I want a multi-rotor, a quadcopter, and then it's going to reboot. And at that point, then I would be going through my standard setup that I would do. And again, I think I'm probably going to do a full video showing how to do iNav 3.0 setup on a model like this when I've got this video done. Now it has rebooted. I can open the file, the dump file that I've been sent for Recon FPV, and then I can copy everything and then I can paste it into the CLI and hit enter. Now that's going to take a little while while it sets all those commands. So it's going to be setting things like the accelerometer calibration, modes, OSD layout, PID tuning, all the settings for the navigation modes. All that stuff is going to be set up in here. The only thing I just noticed is that there is a save command at the end of this dump file. And unfortunately that means that rather than at the end of the dump being loaded into the CLI, uh, it doesn't give you a chance then to go and review any errors. And I did get a couple in here because this is actually a dump file from a previous version of iNav and a couple of things have potentially changed. However, that is not the end of the process. I think that gives you a firm foundation 
on which you need to spend a little bit of time and do the following things in order for it to work. If you took it out to the field right now, it would be a disaster if you tried to do any of the GPS stuff. So once it's flashed, the first thing I'd recommend you do is go and confirm level on the bench. Have a look in configurator and just make sure that when it's sat on the bench, you're reading 00. zero. Mine was actually a little bit nose down. So in the test hover I did, it was actually flying backwards whenever things were moving around. So what I recommend you do is to recalibrate the accelerometer on your particular flight controller. Now I struggled with this initially, it wasn't letting me do it, but I found that if I started off with the model upside down, it kind of forced the process to happen. And doing that a couple of times meant that at the end of it, I could read the uh, model being level on the bench and that's where it needs to be because that's kind of the starting point for it uh, hovering nicely in some of the more advanced INAV modes. Once you've done that, second thing I would recommend you do is calibrate the compass. Now the compass calibration is there by the side of that initial calibration that we've just done and you just click on calibrate compass and then you make it do the dance. Now I'm doing it indoors here uh, but ideally you kind of want to be out away from lots of magnetic interference or electronic equipment things like that because you want a nice read. The trick is you need to spin it in 360 degrees in each axis you get 30 seconds to do it, it does count down and then make sure, I always like to have the model sat on the bench ready for when it finishes and then again we can just save and reboot those settings. I point the model to where north is and I know exactly where north is, I've done this a lot over the years and then when it boots up what you're looking for is the heading to be zero degrees or there or thereabouts and as you move it around you want to see it moving. Now again, the reason we've done this is because the dump file has come from a model that probably had the compass calibrated in somewhere like China, and that isn't where I am here in the UK. So the magnetic field orientation will definitely be different because of the time between when the dump file was created and this one, and also I'm on a completely different part of the planet. Once that's done, then we're into standard stuff, really. I'd go and confirm your receiver function and mappings, make sure that everything is moving properly, middle channel positions are 1500, set up your flight modes. I'd recommend Horizon as your basic flight mode, go for something like um, the nav position hold, and then something like nav return to home for the three modes for the initial test. Then go into the on-screen display and move things around to how you want them. And the other big tip here is upload the iNav font. The font in iNav has a lot of special characters designed around all of those um, sophisticated flight bits that it does. So you're going to need to upload that. And if you went back to beta flight, again, you'd have to uh, re-upload the beta flight font. Lots of different ones. I've just gone for the default one and made sure that the information I want is on the screen. I'd also recommend that you set up the INAV script on your radio. The CCRSF and telemetry is turned on. So with that script on your radio, you'll be able to see exactly when you've got a GPS lock, your battery status, and all that kind of good stuff, which when you're flying FPV, you're probably not going to use. But while you're sat there at the field waiting for the GPS to get the lock for the first time before you go and fly, it's incredibly handy. And if you're flying and the GPS um, return to home initializes, I don't know, maybe have an FPV problem, you can kind of monitor the flight light on the telemetry because that CRSF connection of Crossfire or something like ELRS is still going to be working. A couple of other things that have not been set in the dump file that I recommend you do, I would set the hover throttle to be what the model actually hovers at. Uh, by default it's 1500, that's still what it's set in this dump file. I personally uh, change that to about 1260 which is a little bit more like what this model actually hovers at. It hovers about quarter percent throttle on the 5S pack that I'm using. And lastly do confirm that the failsafe mode is set for GPS return to home and also make sure that when you turn the radio off on the bench that you can see uh, the failsafe stuff is being detected and that the failsafe is all working properly. So there are three flight modes actually set up on this model. I'm going to be doing everything in line of sight so I can catch it if something horrible goes wrong. 
Uh, first thing I need to do is turn on the radio. Welcome to Open TX. And we need to put it into the iNav Lua script. That will tell me when the GPS is ready to rock and roll. I've also got my goggles around my neck so that I can record the FPV footage so you can see that. First of all, we've got to plug it in and we've got to let it get the GPS lock. So, we've now got GPS good, we're ready for a flight, so let me just put it bum towards me, make sure there's on a nice flat bit where the props aren't going to get uh, caught. Now the first place that I arm it is going to be uh, the home location, so this will be considered the safe place to come back to by default. So let's arm it and take off and just check that Horizon works. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, let's try GPS loiter. So I'm not holding any sticks at this point. Might need a little bit of a tune. But it is working to maintain its position. Little bit of flicking, but actually, you know what? That's pretty good. Okay, with that looking reasonably good let's go into horizon and the reason it doesn't sink take that a bit further away the reason it doesn't sink is because the hover throttle is at the right level so while I've still got a good view of it take it further away so that I can try this okay let's see if that's going to do it return to home so here she comes this is completely autonomous so she's going to fly back to me, hopefully. <laughs> You're going to stop. She's going to pause for a second. And then she's going to descend. This is all without me touching a thing. This is also what's going to happen with the fail safe. So this is why I love iNav. Like I say, the position hold probably needs a little bit of work. Here she comes. She's hit the ground. Altitude off. Engines disarmed. I am really happy with that. That to me looks exactly Ready to fly. like it should be. So I'm happy that we have all the basic stuff set up. Now I can crack on and start fine tuning everything. But that iNav setup works. So with that test flight done, you are in a fantastic place. It now means that iNav is set up and you know the accelerometer, gyro, barrow, compass, magnetometer are all working well enough so that you can actually trust this thing to fly about with. Potentially use things like uh, mission planning, which I'm probably going to do a separate video on for this thing, uh, where you can upload a mission and tell it to go and fly that autonomously, or you can park it in 3D space, and if you have a gimbal, you can have a look around, or you've got a nice return to home, which means that if something horrible happens, this thing is actually going to fly back to you in a controlled manner, and then it's going to do all the work, including landing and disarming, at the place it was armed. Now there's loads of different options for return to home, I'm not going to cover those here, but you can even do things like nominate safe areas to go to, so if you take off uh, in a location that's maybe surrounded by high trees but there's a nice open field somewhere else you can kind of set it up so that field then becomes the place it will fly back to rather than you know potentially a little bit off and clip a tree. There are a number of things, as I've just shown, that you need to do. You don't just upload the dump or default file from somebody else onto an iNav machine and then just expect it to work. You need to calibrate the accelerometer, the specific accelerometer that's in your model. You need to calibrate the compass because the person who sent you the diff or dump file might be on a different place in the planet. And also the compass position actually moves. It actually cycles around um, a little bit. Also make sure that your radio channels are all at 1500, if they're not then it's going to wander as well. Set up the modes, again Horizon, Nav, Position Hold and Nav Return to Home are the three that I use for the testing. Once you've got that done then you can set it up however you want. Don't forget to set the on-screen display up how you like and also update the font for iNav 
of the on-screen display. Otherwise, you'll have some weird characters trying to be displayed, and that'll be the issue. Uh, and also, I would recommend display HDOP horizontal degrees of precision. I talked about this in my GPS video, um, and it just shows you how accurate the 3D lock is. Um, and I normally will only fly an iNav craft once it's about below about 1.8. Above 2.0 is dodgy. Uh, ideally, you kind of want it below 1.5, but below 1.8, I'll have a crack at. So there is varying degrees of uh, 3D lock, and I like a good one before I take off because I want the model to know exactly where it needs to come back to if there's a problem. Don't forget to set up your hover throttle. Again, disappointingly, that wasn't set up in the diff file. Uh, I think if you are, have been flying INAV for a while, these are kind of common things that you have a look at, but that's one of the key ones. If the hover throttle was set to 1500, whenever, uh, whenever altitude hold was initiated or the GPS uh, position hold, it would immediately shoot into the sky because that 1500 value is the one it jumps to uh, and then realizes, oh, I'm climbing and then stops itself. Having it closer to the hover point which on this is 1260, just means that transitions are an awful lot smoother. Don't forget to install the Lua script onto your radio. That is a great thing to be able to do because once you plug it in, you are going to have to give it a minute or two to get a nice GPS lock, even with a good GPS like this for the first flight. And don't forget to confirm your return to home settings and your fail safe are all working. I also would recommend checking that when you go to the fields for a flying day before every flight and that way if something nasty does happen it, this will come back to you you don't want to lose an expensive model like this uh, but just assuming that everything's set up okay uh, it also pays potentially recalibrate your compass once every six months which is something that i do too last couple of points beware of the save command at the end of the dump file that was applied from recon fpv i think if i did this again I would probably just do a standard iNav setup and just have a look at what the PID tunings were for it and copy those in. Uh, in fact, I almost certainly now I'm making this video going to do a full iNav setup video from start to finish and I'll do it on this quad. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that have been looking at the Recon 7 Pro uh, and now you know how to get iNav on there uh, so that all the basic stuff works and you can trust it to fly around. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media, and if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.